Hi, everyone. I'll be here today to show you how to get started with Orango Graph, which is the managed service for OrangoDB over cloud. I'll be walking you through today how to get started with our 14-day trial. We'll be creating our first deployment, and we'll be loading our first data set into OrangoDB from CSV files and immediately use our data loader to create a graph out of it. So let's get started. If you navigate to dashboard.orangodb.cloud, you'll be greeted with this page where you can click on the green Start Free button to get started. This will prompt you to sign in with an SSO provider. In this case, I'll just pick Google. So once you've signed in with SSO, you'll be greeted with this page where you can fill out a quick form to provide some information about you. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to say I'm part of OrangoDB, and I'm just going to mention that I'm new to graph databases. Additionally, we have our Slack community organization for OrangoDB. So if you're interested, you can just provide your account name and we can reach out for an invite. Once you click Get Started, You'll be greeted with the Orango Graph dashboard page. This is a place where you can manage multiple Orango DB deployments, either under projects or not, along with managing your members and pricing. On the left-hand side, you've got your deployments, which is your main page to manage all of the different Orango DB databases you're going to have, projects, which can host multiple deployments, your pricing, and then the ability to switch to the full enterprise Orango Graph feature. So this trial is available for under our account for 14 days. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, click on uh, create my first inst instance under AWS Ohio. From here, we're able to uh, provide some information about our background. Um, so if you're familiar with NetworkX or if you have a specific industry experience, you can select some of these boxes to get enhanced enablement material or be given custom data sets for your purposes. Uh, in this particular case, I'm just going to say that I'm starting out with experience uh, with supply chain. Um, and, you know, I can mention more if I wanted to. So we'll give it a few minutes. Our deployment is creating. Once the deployment is created, we're greeted with this page where we can navigate to our data loader, our data science tab, and gain additional information about our deployment via the operations tabs. In this particular case, it looks like everything is loaded. Our, our database seems to be ready. It does say that it expires in 14 days, but we can still access the database URL. So if I go ahead and just copy paste this database URL and open up a new page, I'm greeted with the OrangoDB UI interface, which allows me to access the actual database. If I go back to my first tab and just grab the password, I can use the username root to sign in. This gives you to this takes you, I'm sorry, to the OrangoDB database UI, specifically for the system database, where we can add different collections, use our query language, manage our graphs, or create new databases. I'm just going to go ahead and create our new database and let's call it my new database. And I'll actually switch from system to my new database. And if you're curious what that other travel database was, this is because every database comes loaded with uh, some sample data set. We'll actually be using the exact same data set today from CSV format and load it into a DB as a graph. So. Once we're back to this deployment page, we're going to go ahead and start some sample data set into OrangoDB as a graph. This will introduce our new concept called the data loader, which is meant for you to load CSV files into OrangoDB using our interface for creating graphs and modeling the, the data you want to insert. Once I click on transform data into graph, I'm greeted with the ability to select a database, in which case we'll use the my new database that we just created. And we'll, we'll, we'll call it my first graph for the graph we're about to create. This is an interface for you to model the graphs that you're going to load with the data loader. 
On the left hand side, you'll see a big UI, which is kind of like a canvas for you to add multiple nodes and describe the relationships between one node to another or a node to itself. Now, this is useless without loading some CSV file. So let's go ahead and grab some sample CSV files from a different tab that I've got over here. In this case, we'll be working with a data set regarding airports and connections from one airport to another. This is just two simple CSV files, and I could quickly show you what this looks like. So just a tabular data for airports with a primary key, along with some additional information about the airport itself, along with the flights CSV file, which basically represents information on connections from one flight, or sorry, one airport to another. So you can see that it has a specific airline, uh, it has an ID for that airline, and then it has the the source and the destination airport as foreign keys uh, to the respective airports. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on download. We'll do the same for the flights. Once I navigate back to the data loader page, I can go ahead and go to my downloads and just drag and drop the airports file along with the flights file that I just downloaded. This will introduce a, a, a spot for me to examine my CSV file along with the different headers that are associated to each file. So notice the fields that we, we were previously looking at are now showing up with example values. So if I go back to my graph viewer, I can go ahead and just click on one of the nodes in this case, this will give you the option to specify your first vertex collection name. So we're going to be calling this collection source airports. And we're going to say that it belongs to the file called airports.csv. So we're basically mapping a vertex collection to a specific CSV file. And then we're going to need to select a primary identifier. We have a lot to choose from. I'm just going to pick airport ID as the identifier for our um, for our airports. Furthermore, you also have the option to specify the specific fields you want to load in this vertex collection. So we'll say that upon loading this data, I want to be able to keep the name, the city, the country, maybe even the second airport ID, and some additional location coordinates uh, for for my for my airports. Okay. So this node is ready. I'm going to go ahead and click on the second node. Let's call this one destination airports. Same thing. I'll say that it belongs to airports.csv. And I'll say that the primary key will be just called airport ID. And so I had the option. I could have easily just stayed with one vertex collection and kept the graph homogeneous. But in this case, I wanted to showcase what it would look like to create a heterogeneous graph using the same airports.csv file. So we have our source and destination airports. Now I can just click on the edge that's in red and say that this one will be called flights. The file we'll be using is called flights.csv. And then we're actually going to need the foreign keys that we saw previously as we'll use them as the source and destination IDs to connect our vertex collections together. We'll also take the airline and airline ID along with the code share stops and equipment fields just for more information. Right, so we've just modeled our first graph using the data loader UI by grabbing some sample data sets that we saw from the airport CSV file that you guys previously looked at. So from here, I could just say, save and start import to get started. This will validate the CSV files and load the data into a RongoDB as a graph. Great. So it tells me that it's loaded 60, 6,400 documents for the source airports, 6,400 documents for the destination airports, and around 67,000 edges for the flight's edge collection. Let's go ahead and check out our graph. So if we go to the database UI, we're in my database. I'm just going to hit refresh. And now I should see the collections appear called destination airports, flights, and source airports. If I take a look at source airports, for example, you can see what a document looks like. 
Same goes for the destination airports, along with the flight's edges. So you can see here that from a source airport to a destination airport, we can click on one of them and it'll take me to the associated vertex. So it's important to also mention that OrangoDB is just not, not only graph native, but actually document native, key value native, and search native. We call ourselves the multi-model database for graph and beyond. And that's because you can actually use OrangoDB for any of these four purposes that I've just mentioned. And notice we are actually combining multiple models in this little graph example that we just loaded. Of course, our data is in a graph, but we're also taking advantage of a nested or a traditional JSON document. So our, a traditional document store along with some key value pairs. And we can actually re rely on something called ArangoDB views and ArangoDB analyzers to leverage full text search all within ArangoDB. So this gives you the flexibility to decide when you want to use a graph, when you just, or when you want to just use documents, or when you want to combine a bit of both to leverage uh, full, full, the full capabilities of ArangoDB. Right. Let's also take a look at our graph. So if I click on my first graph, it'll take me with a starting node. I can just go to the nodes page and I'll just click on uh, show collection name, color nodes by collection. I'll also go to size by collection and then do the same for the edges. Click on apply. And then I'll click on over here, load full graph. In this particular case, it can visualize separate nodes without any connections. But if I click on one of them and set as a start node, you can start to see the relationships between the source and destination airports. So you can see that YVR in particular has a lot of connections to a bunch of different um, source airports, right? If I want to kind of traverse the graph via the UI, I can right click on any of my nodes and then I can click on set as start node. And this will take me to a new version or a new visualizer uh, of, of this particular neighborhood with the start node in yellow. I can also increase or decrease the limit if I want to view more nodes at a time. Once we've observed our graph, we can also look at the query tab to run our first query. So if you go to the queries tab, get rid of this, I can quickly show you what it looks like to just use our Arango query language, which combines the four multi-model capabilities of ArangoDB. In this particular case, we'll just iterate through uh, the source airports collection, sort randomly to fetch a, a random airport, and then just return that airport. So here you can kind of see what it looks like to view the data both in table format and in JSON format. Additionally, I can also combine this simple document lookup with a graph traversal. So by iterating through the different source airports, I can choose to basically start a separate, a second for loop embedded within the, the first for loop. And I can specify our first graph traversal basically saying to iterate to our destination airports, fetching also the flight with it, in a one dot dot one neighborhood, so limiting the graph traversal to just one hop in any direction, so disregarding the edge direction, specifying the start vertex, and specifying the edge collection. We'll also limit it to the first 25 results, and just for now, return the flights. So here you can see a quick visual example of what it looks like to perform a graph traversal on some of the data. If I'm not interested in the edges, I can just return the destination airport along with the source airport to help me further understand what data I'm looking at. Looks like I just forgot to specify the collection at the beginning. And so here you can kind of get an idea of the different data that we're working with. It's also worth mentioning that ArangoDB's document capabilities is not limited to top level fields. What I mean by that is the fact that ArangoDB is JSON native means that we support nested fields within ArangoDB, which is a big differentiator between our competitors. So for example, if I wanted to, I could basically create a new object right here called my object this to foo, set this to bar, or if I wanted to even go further in the nesting, 
and just hit save. Right, so this is something that we kind of differentiate from other traditional graph databases where we can support both a combination of graph, document, key value, full text search, as well as nested JSON fields, all in OronkoDB and all powered by one query language. At this point, we've just shown you a quick example of how to get started with a Rongo graph, create your first deployment, along with creating and loading your first data set into a RongoDB as a graph, with an additional overview or a quick overview of our Rongo query language. You're free to get started here to experiment with the different tools that we have available for you at a Rongo graph, or keep watching to learn more about loading some data using our command line tool along with using our natural language layer to basically create a natural language interface around the query language interface that we've just seen.